work quietly and follow along. At any point, click the pause button to catch up or take a break. Alright artists, welcome to the art room today. We're going to be making squish print bumblebees and these are one of my absolute favorites because we're utilizing two colors. The color of the paper and the color of the paint or the ink in this case. What we're going to do is you have your paper, fold it in half like a book and make sure you've got your edges lined up as best as you can and give your paper a nice good crease. You're going to want a nice clear crease for this project. You're gonna open it back up. Now with squish printing, what we do is we apply paint on one side, kind of in the shape of a drawing, in small sections, and then we close our book and give a little rub so the paint transfers and flips to the other side. So the picture will kind of just mirror what's on the left to the right. I like to paint on the left side, it's just a little easier for me so that way I can control the hand um, when I close my squish print. So let's grab our paintbrush, get a little paint. We're gonna begin with the bee's head and we're gonna leave some space at the top of our paper, come down above that much and give your bee from the crease a nice big curve just like that, okay? And then we're also going to finish the head so you can draw a line going straight across. And I like to give my strokes of paint, or excuse me, I like to stroke my paint three times or a couple times just to make sure the paint's nice and evenly spread. Let's do the next important part of our bee, which is the middle section. It's going to come down a slight curve again, going a little bit wider than the head, a little bit bigger. And it's going to come straight in. Good. Now before our paint dries, let's give it a squish. Fold your paper in half and give it a knuckle rub. So I like to just take my knuckles and gently massage the paper. It's gonna, you're gonna go nice and light just enough so that way the paint can stick to this side of the paper. And I like to go in small circles where I just finished printing. Okay, here we go. Kind of around, make sure my paper's nice and flat and we're gonna open it up. It's very important you open up your paper so it doesn't dry and stay closed. Voila, and what is perfectly transferred from the left is to the right. Let's continue on with a B body, okay? So from this point, we are going to come down a little more narrow. There we go. We're gonna come kind of in like a point here. There we go. And I'm gonna give this a squish because my paint is drying relatively fast and I'm sure yours is too. A little knuckle rub. Now just be careful when you get to the edge of the paper. When we squish paint between two pieces of paper, where is it forced to go? Kind of spread out and through that piece. There we go. If you get a little on the edge, don't worry. Just keep rubbing and doing your thing. Here we go. All right, let's add some antennas to our head and kind of fill in. We're gonna work again from the top down of our B. I'm gonna start with some antennas and I just like to go straight out from the head. Straight out and a couple strokes. And I'm also gonna do a leg right away. So right above this section right here where the head and the body meet. Oh, you know what I did, artists? I painted on the left side. Oh, that's not gonna be good because it's different than the right. Let's squish it and see what happens. We wanna avoid this because my antennas may not line up and be the same. And the goal of a squish print is to be the same on the left and the right. Woo. I got some thick antennas now, but that is a-okay. We're gonna keep going. I just showed you what not to do. Okay, so if you want a really good bean, you don't want super thick lines, don't do that. Anyway, we're gonna carry on and let's go to our legs, working in this section right here between the head and the body. And right in that joint, we're gonna come straight up and out. Up and out. 
Very good. Let's give it a fold. And open it up. Awesome. Great, next what we're gonna do is add the wings in the center section. So take a little black and we're gonna come from that same point where we just started our leg. We're gonna come straight out and a little up as well. And I'm gonna leave some edge of the paper between this point where I finished and the edge. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space, okay? And I'm gonna kinda come down from that point where I left off and I'm gonna give it a slight curve. Coming down just like that. And we're gonna bring it back to the body, straight across. Maybe a little angle going up. Now, the important part to make this look like a wing is the details. We're gonna come in the center. We're gonna do a nice curve up and down towards the other side in the center. And let's do that on the bottom again. We're gonna start from the point where we started right here. Out and down and a nice curve. Let's go from this point of the B. We wanna to go to this corner. So we're gonna connect that detail to the corner, that nice line. And we're gonna go from that point where we just picked up our paintbrush and go to the other corner of the wing. This will give our bee a nice detailed wing. Let's give it a fold, knuckle rub. And open it back up, beautiful. So let's take a look at this and pause again because the art materials tell us a lot about what we're doing. So it's important to be in tune with what's going on with your art supplies. Um, right here, the paint is a little dry when it transferred, so there wasn't as much paint. What I could do is I can reapply paint in those areas. So like this line is super dry, so it needs a little more paint. Apply more paint simply in that same spot on the left side, knuckle rub it, and that line will be a little bit bolder. Still have some spots so I can keep going back and forth if I wanted to, but for now I'm gonna move over or keep moving. But I just wanna show you that trick, okay artists? If you ever wanna touch up your bee at the end, that's totally fine. We have to get um, four more legs on our bee, total. We only have to do two. So underneath the wing, let's have another leg come out towards the bottom corner of your page will be just fine. And then it's gonna come down and out again. I'm applying a lot more paint than I normally would for this leg because I want it to be a little thicker. When you squish it, the paint spreads and that's what makes my line thicker. I'm gonna pause and give this a knuckle rub. There we go. There we go, beautiful. What I love about squish printing is the characteristics it brings to your piece. So for example, I love a the texture if you look, it actually appears like my bee has little hair or fuzz on it, which they do in real life. But also I love that cool edging it gives and I like how it brings out certain areas, thickness and just um, really unique parts of the joints just naturally. That's what I love about squish printing. It makes the piece very um, unique in itself. All right, let's continue on with our final leg. We're gonna go towards the middle of our bee booty here and straight out, kind of going similar to the leg before. Down and out for the little feet. I'm gonna go back and I just wanna make it a little thicker, kind of towards, where the, like, I don't wanna call it the thigh, but towards the top of the, near the body. And I'm gonna give it a nice squish. Here we go, knuckle rub. And let's open it back up. Beautiful. Let's go back into some of these areas that I've talked about. I really wanna darken this piece right here. So where would I have to go for that? Exactly on the other side where that is. And I also wanna go across here right away. And I'm gonna hit the part of the wing. There we go. Now, what makes a really great successful squish print, I think, is those really nice bold lines. 
There we go. It just makes the bee pop more on the page. I want to fix his leg right about here. It'd be this side over here. There we go. And a little bit part of his head. And probably this wing section over here. Here we go. Now I did leg, head, and I did the wings. So making sure you rub all the areas you just painted. Much better. Yep, this is much better. All right, oh, I like how this is turning. Do you see how it kind of made eyes? I like that, so I like to enhance that as an artist. I'm gonna add just a little couple circles there. Rub, 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 rub. Woo, big bug eyes, awesome. Now, what is gonna make this thing a bee? The stripes, let's add some stripes, okay? So get some paint on your brush and Stripes for a bee are black and yellow, which is perfect. Remember when I talked about we're gonna utilize the colors? Well, here we go. I'm gonna have some stripes come across the body. Remember, you're only painting half. Here we go. And knuckle rub. Here we go. Perfect. I absolutely love it. Now, if there's something you want to do to make your bee, I don't know, a little more unique, you could color the head black. I think they do have mostly a black head. Or maybe you want to make some lines thicker. Hmm. I could make this line in here. I could totally color this in just to really separate the head and the body from the stripes. You can make your bee unique however you wish. Now, our next step in squish printing, I always like to let the paint dry. And I like to cut it out. It just really separates it and lets me do more unique things with the print. But then I like to go in with a crayon and add some shadows and details and add more colors that way. So that's our next step in squish printing. All right, let's prep um, our B squish print. And this is kind of a little simpler way. We're gonna draw one half. Now, if you fast forward in the video, I didn't draw. I just went and painted and did the drawing method that way. But if you're just starting out for squish print, this is a much easier way to do it to be sure that you have a successful print and to not worry about all the itty bitties with the paint and all that. So let's start by folding your paper directly in half, making a book. I talk more about what a squish print is because it's really more the painting part of this drawing. So if you're not sure quite, just stay tuned. I'll explain it all and show you the process in a little bit. We're gonna begin and I'm using a Sharpie marker so you can see it nice and clearly in the video. But artists, I strongly suggest use a pencil because if you don't like something, you can erase it and adjust it as we go. We're gonna begin. Um, the center fold for my drawing is right here. I'm just gonna put in a line. Don't color a line in yours. This is just so you can see it nice and clearly for the purpose of the video demonstration. We're gonna start with a little space from the top of our page once it's opened. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a nice curve down about that. And then we're gonna come across. You can even make it a little curvy if you want as well. That's gonna be the head of our B. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a little bit more curvy and a little bit more bigger for our B center body. Straight across. And now we're gonna go down to the B and we're gonna go kind of a bigger curve and it could come down to more of a point if you want for the B stinger. Totally fine. All right, let's go back up to the top and we are gonna have a line, maybe a little circle if you want. This is gonna be the bee's antenna. Now don't worry, when we print it, it's gonna be a little bit thicker, all these lines. So don't worry about the details. This is just the basic shape. Next, let's get our leg in and our leg is gonna come from this point, this intersection of lines right here. It's gonna come straight out and over just like that, out and over. In this section of our B, we are going to make the wing. So from that same intersection now of lines, that group of lines, we're gonna come straight out 
you can come up a little bit if you want, kind of more of an angle. Leave a little space. You know, if you want on the edge of your paper, I can go a little bit more. Now we're gonna come curving down. And from this point where we just ended, we're gonna go straight, kind of more up or straight though, towards the bee's body, like so. There we go. We don't wanna connect it to here because that will give kind of our bee a silly shape for a wing, but also we gotta save room for the legs. Let's finish our wing details first. We are going to start in the center of our wing. So right here. And you're gonna come straight across and curve down. Straight across, curve down. From the point where you started, you're just gonna curve a line down and a little farther down that line, right about here, you're gonna take your pencil and curve down to the corner. From this point where we just started, you're gonna take it and curve up to the top corner. There's some details for our wing. For the leg, we're gonna come right underneath the wing, wherever you choose. I'm gonna leave a little space and you're gonna come out down at an angle straight down to your belly button then and then a little dink to the left for the foot in this part of the B you're gonna come in the center more same thing boys and girls you're gonna come out down and a little tink to the left this is the basic part of our B all right now we're gonna go into the next part, which is squish printing. And I don't have any lines, but what you can do in the video is follow along and paint where I paint. But all you have to do is simply trace over your lines and enjoy the fun process of printmaking. Let's do it. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make our bee look more 3D from our squish print by doing some basic coloring techniques. We're gonna start with, I have all these crayons. I have a yellow, a gray, a white, and an orange. I'm gonna start with the yellow. Now you may not be able to see this, but it does make a little bit of a difference. In our squish print, we're gonna be using this kind of like a coloring book and inside the spaces along the edges, I'm starting on the left here, we're gonna just add a little bit of yellow and kind of fade it towards the center of the B or the crease of our paper. Do you see how it kind of transitioned? And I'm gonna do that to the other side. The reason we're doing this artist is because on your body there's different shadows, okay? Even like the edge of your arm is a little darker, you know, depending on where the light is. So I just kind of go around that side of the space of the B. There we go. Now the yellow is may not you know show up as other colors, but it just adds that little bit that makes the bee look more real. Now, once you have yellow, oh, don't forget to do your bee's head. Now for the bee's head, you can color kind of more the nose area and the sides around the eyes, whatever you'd like. There, can you kind of see how it made the bee look more 3D off the paper? We can really tell when we do this again with a little bit of gray, but this time not as far over, more towards the side. And so you'll really see what I'm talking about here. Just a little gray in between these spaces. Now let's also talk about the texture of the crayon because that also plays a role in why we're using this material. Not only does it color the paper really nicely, but crayons, when we use them, are made of wax and they kind of look almost fuzzy on the paper. Like our bee is kind of fuzzy. There you go. Do you see how the gray and the yellow already enhanced our bee and made it look more 3D? If you want your bee maybe a little orange, this is a very light orange. If you want to see a little bit more color, we can add in just a little orange, kind of wherever you think. I'm going between the yellow and the gray areas. There we go, just to show more of that fuzz that the bee might have. There we go. And our last color, now bees are yellow and black, usually striped, especially the bumblebees. So we utilize the black uh, paint as our black and made stripes in the process, which is really cool. 
let's go on to white and this time we're going to color the wings all in the spaces to make them look a little more transparent kind of see through of our page This also helps us be able to tell the difference um, and give it more variation, different shades of yellow. We are making a lighter shade of yellow. And it just, once again, makes it look more 3D and more realistic. Okay, so I colored my wings. Now, this is my favorite part of doing this. We're gonna take our white crayon and we're gonna go over some of the lines and kind of trace around the wings here. Do you see what I did here? I kind of did a little earlier. This is going to make our artwork look extremely neat and give the wings like this really cool halo effect. By halo, I also mean like that they're glowing or that there's movement, like the wings are moving really, really fast. And it's adding another shade to our wing, more color, more fine details. Shade would be like the light gray color that we mix with the black and the white. Do you see the difference between these wings and how nicely they're looking? I'm gonna do this right here. There we go. Kind of see the difference. It made our work overall really nice and clean. That's what we want. We want nice, clean artwork artists. So I'm just going along the side of the black in that space to the right side now. You might need to press a little hard on your crayon just a heads up. There we go. Now, absolute favorite part is I'm gonna use this white crayon. I'm gonna go over some areas on my B. It can be maybe part of the stripe. Maybe I wanna do this part of the leg and maybe a little bit. This is gonna add a little bit of highlights. Highlights are different bright areas that the light touches on our body or on our subject matter. And you'll see how it really is gonna increase the contrast between the colors, the difference. Here it really made the bee look like he had some shoulders, some lines. I'm gonna divide the legs and the wing from his body just by adding the simple line. Now you don't have to add these lines um, in the same place as I am. You can add them wherever you see fit. You can trace around your whole bee. So I really like this bump here. So I'm gonna kinda exaggerate it or draw more attention to it in the shape of his little feet antenna. Same over on this side. I'm going to make it a little different, maybe around the toes more. This one, the heel. And a little bit around the wings as well. Now, if you get a little outside your line, don't worry. Remember, we talked about how the squish print, we're actually going to cut the bee out and make it look more real. So no worries. And what you can do is you can even go around on the eyes if you wanted to do something with them that way, made them look more 3D. I'm gonna add a little more here, just to kind of complete the look. There we go. This is my favorite part because it really makes the difference in the squish print. All right, that's how we colored our bead. Now we're gonna cut it out and I'm gonna show you. I like to just start and I'm going around the edge of the black. This is the point artist. If there's something you're not quite liking the shape of, or you'd like to make it more of a solid shape, you can do that by cutting it out. Like here's a really good example of where we're at here. I can choose either to cut on this really nice bold line of the foot or where the paint didn't quite have enough. And there's still a line, you know, you can kind of see two different ways. I'm gonna look at the other foot and I kind of want them to be the same or I could make them a little different, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna actually keep it solid black for my choice as an artist. So I'm gonna turn it. And I'm just gonna cut all the way around my bee. If I like some bumps, I can keep the bumps or I can just cut it really straight, okay? You just wanna do a really nice job cutting it out, okay? And maneuver the paper. I'm gonna cut my bee out and thanks for joining me with our bumblebee squish print.